Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Azul Byte 4 Mini Fanless PC. Now on my channel, I've taken a look at a few different Azul PCs in the past and I've always had really good luck with them. They're readily available from Amazon and the Azul website. The build quality is fine. Windows and Linux has always performed great for me on these devices. Now this is their new Byte 4. Like I mentioned, it's a totally fanless design. We have a quad-core Intel CPU up to 2.7 gigahertz. It's got four gigs of DDR4 RAM right out of the box, and we do get Windows 10 Home 64-bit pre-installed. So here's a look at the Byte 4 itself. I mean, it's definitely a very compact little mini PC. We do have a lot of I.O. on the rear and the side. I was actually surprised to see how much I.O. they have crammed into this little thing. And we actually have some upgradability options with this unit. We can actually add more RAM, we can add an M.2 SSD, and a 2.5 inch drive. Now, if they went away with that, they could have made this a lot smaller, but I'm kind of glad that they left those options there. That way we can upgrade the RAM and the storage whenever we want to. So along with the Byte 4 Mini PC, we're also going to receive a warranty guide, our user manual, and we have a little box of extra accessories. So we have our power supply, and we also have some extra screws for mounting a different drive in here and the thermal pad in case you want to add an M.2 drive in here down the road. Now as for the power supply, it's 12 volts, 2 amps, so we have 24 watts of power here. And in my experience, that's plenty for the CPU they're using inside of here. So I actually do like the design they went with on this. It looks just like their older Byte 3. We have a big power button on the front. This is power and reset. There's also an IR port in case you want to use one of their IR remotes to control the PC. Taking a look at the left hand side, there's a little bit of ventilation, but like I mentioned, this is a passively cooled unit, so there's no fans in here whatsoever. Moving over to the right hand side, we have a micro SD card slot, four USB 3.0 ports, and USB Type C. And when it comes to the rear, from the left to the right, we have our power input for that 12 volt, 2 amp power supply, dual gigabit Ethernet, full size display port, full size HDMI. We also have VGA and there's a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. I know it's a bit hard to see, but it's on the far right hand side, right above that right antenna. So as these mini PCs go, I mean, this basically has you covered on all fronts. I was really surprised to see that amount of I.O. on a PC this small. I did want to pull the bottom off just to take a look at the interior. And to my surprise, this does have upgradable RAM. Usually when we're working with these small PCs, they use LP DDR4 RAM and solder it to the board, but we have two SODIMM slots in here and it will accept up to 16 gigabytes of RAM at 2400 megahertz. And as for storage upgrade options, we can add a 2.5 inch drive, be it mechanical or SSD, and they've also included an M.2 slot. This is not NVMe, it's only an M.2 SSD, but it's great to see a small PC like this have this many options built in. So as for the specs of the Azul Byte 4, for the CPU we have the Intel Celeron J4125, we have 4 cores with a base clock of 2 GHz and a burst up to 2.7, it'll do 2.6 on all 4. The GPU is the built-in Intel UHD 600 graphics up to 750 MHz, this comes pre-installed with 4 gigs of RAM but it can be upgraded to a total of 16 because as we saw we have those dual SODIMM slots, and in my experience with these lower end chips, it will make a world of difference with the GPU by adding an extra stick of RAM in here. Running it in dual channel is definitely the way to go. We have 64 gigabytes of internal storage, but we can add an M.2 or 2.5 inch drive, and we can have a total of 2 terabytes plus that 64. 802.11ac Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, and it does come pre-installed with Windows 10 Home 64 bit. All right, so here we are. I've installed a bunch of stuff to test out. Now, one of the main things I wanted to test here was a little bit of light gaming, but with four gigs of RAM, that's really not gonna be possible with a lot of stuff. So when we get there, I will be adding another four gigs of RAM to this, but I will do a little bit of testing between four and eight, and you'll see the difference here. It will make a big difference, but sitting with four gigs of RAM, I mean, using this as an everyday PC does work out really well. I've got the Edge browser here. We'll just head over to Azul's website. And as you can see, everything loads up quite fast. We can browse through all of this. So I mean, browsing the web on this J4125 inside of this Byte 4 is definitely a treat. I mean, it works really well. It's a lot better than the older Atom CPUs. I've been able to do 720, 1080p, and even 4K playback. And speaking of 4K playback, let's head over to YouTube real quick. So from here, I'll just pause this. We'll go full screen, turn on stats for nerds. Well, I tried to pause it. But on the initial load in, you will see some drop frames. 
You see we're sitting at 23 right now out of 500 frames, and that's located right up here in the top left-hand corner. So as you can see, I mean, 4K video playback is possible. You will get some drop frames here and there, but overall, if you didn't have that frame counter on to show you the drop frames, you'd never notice it. I've had really good luck on these J4125 CPUs with 4K video playback, be it streaming from YouTube, Netflix, or even Plex. And speaking of Plex, we're going to move over there right now. So here we are with Plex, and we'll just go with this one here. It's a demo, 4K, 60 FPS, 78 megabits per second. We'll just resume it here, and I'll go full screen with it. Again, like I mentioned, I mean, I've had really good luck with 4K Plex playback on these little chips. I've tested a few of these mini PCs with the same CPU. Now it's time to move over to some gaming. We're going to start out light here with Minecraft. I didn't change any of the settings. This is the Windows Store version, and we're running at 60. I expected it would work well. This is a very well-optimized game, and I've even had good luck on lower-end Atom chips with this same game. But let's go ahead and take it up a notch. We're going to go with Overwatch. We still only have 4 gigs of RAM installed, and if we take a look at our RAM usage with Afterburner, you see we're maxed out and I get a ton of freeze ups. It will jump up to 40 FPS, then right back down to one because it's using virtual memory and it's just not gonna work out this way. So I threw another four gig stick in here, bringing it up to eight and we're running in dual channel. And this is the performance you can expect out of a game like Overwatch, 720p, low settings. By the end of this run here, I had an average of 33 FPS. Definitely not top tier, but to see it running on this fanless little mini PC like this is pretty awesome. Moving over to CSGO, I just kept that other stick in there, so we have 8 gigs of RAM running in dual channel, low settings, 720p. By the end of this run, I had an average of 38 FPS. So this is performing on par with other J4125 systems that I've tested in the past. And by the way, with all of the testing I've been doing, I'm keeping an eye on total system power draw from the wall and CPU temperature. We'll take a look at that by the end of this video. One game I always like to test is the original Skyrim, especially on these lower end chips, but I had a weird issue with this. I could not get it to go full screen. I got a rogue cursor going around on screen when I'm trying to control my character. And usually with these Celeron chips, I run into an issue where there's no sound present, but we have sound, I just couldn't get it to go full screen. Either way you look at it, I had an average of 37 FPS by the end. And the final game I tested was Dirt 3, 720p, low settings. This one gave me an audio issue. I wasn't getting any audio out of the HDMI with this unit here. And when it comes down to it, these little issues do pop up every once in a while when you're running them on lower end Celeron chips or Atom chips, but I haven't seen it with this game. Like I mentioned with Skyrim, this is the problem I usually run into with that one. I also ran Geekbench 5 on the Azul Byte 4, and I compared it to two other mini PCs that I've recently done reviews on with this same J4125 chip. As you can see, the Azul Byte 4 scored a 461 in single core and a 1565 in multi. And if we take a look at the bottom one here, this is from the Larkbox Pro. Basically, same score on single, but the Larkbox Pro did beat out the Byte 4 in multi-core by quite a bit, because this is Geekbench 5. As for power consumption, I measured this from the wall. This is total system power consumption at idle, 5.3 watts, 4K video playback from YouTube, 11.7 watts, 720p gaming with Overwatch netted me 17.3 watts, and the maximum wattage that I could get this box to pull was 23.8 watts from the wall, and that's using an extreme test. I run Cinebench R20 and 3D Mark Time Spy at the same time. So unless you're basically stressing everything out on this to 100%, you'll never see that 23.8 watts from the wall. So overall, I mean, it's a very low power draw PC. As for temperatures, it idles around 38, 4K video playback settled down at 43. With Overwatch, I was averaging 72 degrees Celsius, but with most of the other games, it never reached that high. And the maximum that I could get the CPU to go to was 88 degrees Celsius, 
with my extreme test. So in the end, I think the Azul Byte 4 actually performed really well. I've tested some of these J4125 mini PCs and the performance was really, really bad because they wanted to limit power to that CPU to keep it nice and cool. But even though this is passively cooled, I still think it does a really good job. As we saw, the Larkbox Pro did get a higher multi-core score, but I'd say in real world performance, these are on par with each other. And with the Azul, we have a lot more IO on the unit itself. We also have more upgradability. We can add that M.2 SSD, a 2.5 inch SSD, and we can upgrade the RAM all the way to 16 gigs. So if you're looking for a small PC powered by one of these Celeron chips, this is one to definitely take a look at. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you want to see anything else running on the Azul Byte Forge, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.